Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about Dalai Lama. I'm not going to talk about his religion, I'm not going to talk about Buddhism or his spiritual philosophy. This video is about his politics. I'm going to talk about Dalai Lama's views on Afghanistan, his views on Iraq, his views on George Bush and Donald Trump, his views on Israel and Palestine, and his conflicting views on terrorism. So this is going to be completely about the man's politics. So I hope you can leave religion out of this conversation. Now, before we get started in this video, please do remember to subscribe, like, share and comment. Now let's start with war in Afghanistan and war in Iraq. We have some kind of liberation, Afghanistan. And the people themselves, I think, suffer a lot under their uh, previous regimes. Uh, so that seems uh, quite clear. Uh, now I think important is follow up. That um, I think uh, should carry. Now another sort of problem, Iraq problem started. So neglect about Afghanistan, that is wrong. Neglect. Uh, if, if, no, neglect. Should, should follow. Follow up. And then Iraq, more complicated. <laughs> so I think this moment too early to say. According to Dalai Lama, the war in Afghanistan was a clear cut case. He thinks that it was a justified war. And he has said it multiple times. And he thinks that war in Iraq is also justified. But he uses the line, it's too early to say. That's something he says a lot. Every time he's asked a question, he usually starts with, it's too early to say. And then he says something that is quite ridiculous oftentimes. But on this case, according to this man, attacking a sovereign nation was justified. And his justification was that the people were already suffering there. And that's something that he's going to use. He's going to say that democracy justifies invasion. Now let me show you. Is to, to use the threat of force and including military force in dealing with internet on the level of international relations. That is very unfortunate. Uh, very often, I sort of share with people, with audience, like America, as far as domestic policy is concerned, generally speaking, you are very much cherishing democracy. Uh, but in the field of international relations, that democratic principle is not there. Uh, mm -hmm. Still relying on show of force. And that's backward. But at the same time, you can't blame America. And the whole, I think they, uh, some kind of uh, using force by dictatorship, authoritarian, or democratically elected government, at least they use force by elected democratic government is much better. He was asked a question about people using force in international relations. And this question came after the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. So it was clearly about US. But then he goes and says, everyone uses force, but at least in US they have elections. And somehow that is supposed to make it justifiable that war in Iraq and Afghanistan is acceptable because the US has a democracy. Now when it comes to Russia, he's not supporting war in Ukraine because Russia is not a democratic country according to him. So if there was a better election system in Russia, this man would probably support war in Ukraine. But I have to say that this is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Illegal war is an illegal war. No matter how many people vote, this man puts Western nations and supposed democracies in one category and everything they do, he will whitewash and support. But then when it comes to China, when it comes to Russia, when it comes to other countries, he will be very critical. There's a clear double standard here. Then of course, as individual, individual person, I love President Bush. Which one? The younger one. Really? Yes, really. Why? As a human being. Really? Not as a president of America. Uh, sometimes his policy may not be very, very successful. But as a person, as a human being, very nice person. I love him. But how did you feel that President Bush, oh. 
went to war mm. so much mm. and was responsible for so, so many deaths. His, oh, after, if you're a man of peace. Oh, after he sort of started uh, the uh, Iraq sort of crisis, uh, then another sort of my occasion meeting with him. Then I expressed to him, I love you, but your policy is concerned, I have some reservation. Mm. I told him. <laughs> now again, this will show you that he thinks war in Afghanistan was a great thing. But war in Iraq, he had some reservations. And he told George Bush, I love you. One of the greatest war criminals that have lived in our times. This man told him, I love you, but I have some reservations. Could you imagine that? Do you think he would tell Putin today the same thing, Putin I love you, but what you're doing in Ukraine, I have some reservations. No, he actually said that Russia cannot be trusted and they will never abide by the international laws. That's what he said about Russia. But when it came to Bush, because Bush was supporting him, he gave him a free pass. And this is my problem with this man. Everything he says is political. He takes a stance based on his own selfish benefits. He doesn't stand against Western imperialism because the West is supporting him. He will tell the Western leaders, I love you. Another thing that he says, as you heard earlier, is that we cannot tell yet. It's too early to tell if the West is actually destroying Libya or Syria or everything. We cannot say now because he doesn't want to criticize the Western leaders or Western countries. And this is a man that we are supposed to look up to. This is a man that is held as a standard of morality in a sense, that he will tell the truth and he's always for peace. But this man loves war criminals. Now let me show you what he said about Trump. Donald Trump oh. is a very controversial character. Have you met Donald Trump? Never. What do you think of him? I don't know. Sometimes you see his sort of, the, the way you see hair, so <laughs> something like that, uh, and his mouth small. <laughs> That my impression. That's but, a good impression. Uh, but, but I don't know. I don't know why, but I found this bit funny because he could have criticized Donald Trump a lot on. He could have criticized his policies. He could have criticized a lot of the crazy thing he said. He could have criticized him talking about bombing this country using nuclear weapons against North Korea. But he doesn't criticize any of the policies. He takes it to a personal level. He started to talk about the man's hairs, his mouth. He went to his physical features, which is very petty in my opinion. Let's talk about ISIS and terrorism now. Let's see how he talks about when Muslims do terrorism compared to when Buddhists do it. What do you think of ISIS? Do you worry very about sad. ISIS? Very sad. You see, the very factor which uh, inspiration to human being, these sort of the major tradition. Uh, give us message of love, forgiveness, tolerance. That very factor now causing more division, more hatred, is unthinkable. I think due to lack of sort of say, close contact and environment, you see, through I think centuries, some of these Muslim brothers, sisters remain more or less isolated. Indian Muslims. And, and also Indonesian Muslim, you see, the, the through centuries, they live with different sort of religious tradition. So you see, their sort of, in their mind, it take, I mean, it take for granted there are different traditions. I have to say that I found this funny coming from a Buddhist monk. This man is arguing that there is terrorism in Syria and in Iraq because they are not used to people from other religions. I mean, there are people who call this region the cradle of civilization, you know, due to Mesopotamia and all of those things. Even during the Prophet, they were living with different religions, with Muslims, with Christians. But according to him, the problem is that Muslims were too isolated. And that's why there is terrorism. That's why ISIS exists, because they've never met a Christian person. 
It has nothing to do with the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, the wars that he supported. It has nothing to do with foreign nations arming and supporting these terrorist organizations. It has nothing to do with anything like that. The problem is that they've been isolated for too long and now they came into contact with Christians and they've lost their minds. If you put on YouTube, Dalai Lama ISIS or Dalai Lama terrorism, stuff like that, he loves to talk about stuff like that. That's his main point. And he always says that, oh, we need to talk with each other. Muslims are being isolated. There's not understanding. They don't know the ways of the civilization, basically. That's what he's saying. Let's see what he says when Buddhists are criticized. You said not so long ago, um, I don't believe peace will come through prayer peace must come through our actions yes, and indeed there was a tweet that went out from your account um, yesterday that made a similar point but the actions of some Buddhists have in recent times been very bloody I mean I'm thinking of the attacks on the uh, Muslims in Burma and and Sri Lanka um, do you have no control over their actions there of course uh, even I think uh, I think all the, the, the religious tradition, I think the supreme our teacher, like Jesus Christ or Buddha, is he cannot control <laughs> all human mind. <laughs> but isn't that abdicating? So, so now, yeah, I think one of my uh, friend, one scientist, uh, in many years ago in Argentina, our meeting, uh, one physicist. Uh, he mentioned our meeting. He, uh, scientist, physicist, uh, but he should not develop attachment towards his own scientific field. That means I'm Buddhist. I should not develop attachment towards Buddhism. Now, this is the real sort of point. Uh, if I too much sort of attach my own faith, then your whole mental attitude become biased. With biased mind, you cannot see the other's I say the value objectively. So I think those uh, sometimes people call what we call fundam fundamentalist. So only think yourself, not think others' value. So this is one fundamental thing. Then another thing, I think many cases some conflict in the name of religion, but reality, economy reasons, or political sort of conflict differences. So then people use uh, the, uh, the name of religion. So what is the motivation, for example, of uh, the Buddhist monk Wiratu, who, who calls himself the Burmese Bin Laden? He's got tens of thousands of followers and he's been accused of stoking anti-Muslim hatred. What's, what's his motivation? I don't know. Uh, I never sort of have opportunity to study very thoroughly. So unless we know the situation fully, just to make comment, uh, almost like speculation, it's not much use. But you condemn him, presumably. Of course, these are wrong. So when he's asked about Buddhists, terrorizing Muslims he's saying that oh we can't really speak about that because we don't know for a fact and I'm not an expert I understand what he's trying to say I'm not saying that he's strong but I just find it funny that when he's asked about Muslim terrorism or Muslim affairs he never uses those same lines he will speak about Muslim terrorism hours and hours he loves to speak about it i think he considers himself as some kind of an expert but then when it comes to other monks he will be like ah we can't really say anything about them you know and it's not about religion it's about economy but when it comes to muslims it's not about the economy it's not about social issues it's nothing like that it's only about the ideology and it's only the fact that they haven't met people with other religions and i think the lady was literally confused like he was talking about buddhist killing muslims stuff like that and the guy just laughing like a crazy person and then she had to actually ask him like do you condemn do you think it's bad because he didn't say it himself so she had to be like listen and you condemning them but this is something that he does every time he's criticized let me show you another example of Shugden Buddhists yes. have been banned in Tibet. 
Can you explain your response to Shugden Buddhism and oh, yeah. why they appear to feel outlawed by you and your teachings? It is my duty is it to tell what is the reality. Whether listen or not, up to individual. So but, these people, you see, uh, they do not know the whole sort of story. And recently I was in Australia. This is some Shungdun group. This is some protest. Mm -hmm. They uh, stop lying. <laughs> so including some young boy uh, wear monk's rope and shouting. I really felt it's a pity. They do not know what was the four centuries sort of history. So when these demonstrators were demonstrating against him banning other monks and, you know, acting as a totalitarian dictator, he goes, oh, they don't understand nothing. They are like children. They don't know what they are demonstrating against. They don't understand our customs and stuff like that. Now that's very totalitarian, but his main thing is that he always supports democracy and he criticizes China, Russia and those countries because they are supposedly totalitarian. Now could you imagine if people in China were demonstrating against the Chinese government and Chinese president was asked this question and then he answered in the same way. Ah, you don't know what you're talking about. These people, they don't understand nothing. They're like children, these demonstrators. They don't know. That would be a colossal mistake. Chinese president will be laughed out of the room. It will be a huge scandal. Like why is this guy is attacking demonstrators? The few individual sort of mischievous cannot be a represent, representative. representative or represent of the whole community. Now, unfortunately, uh, some, what is it, the uh, terrorist, well, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, recent years, you see, this belongs Muslim community. But Muslim, these handful mischievous people, uh, because of their action, if we generalize whole Muslim is violent, that's a mistake. So therefore, I think we cannot sort of blame Muhammad, because of Muhammad himself. No. I think that's wrong. Who would you blame? I think the embassy, embassy, embassy people here. Should Israel negotiate with the Hamas? And uh, are you concerned at all about the, the rise of Islamic terrorism? I think this, again, I think a very, very tricky question. And also, I think too early to say a uh, definite answer. Uh, I think f first, let us Hazoda, wait and see. Right? In any case, Hamas, through election, now they got the majority. So we must respect as a result of Hazoda, a democratic sort of election. Then what their leadership sort of attitude? I think better to wait. And I, I think I, I want to take this opportunity and also, you see, my appeal to Hamas people. Now, they, through violent way, it won't solve, won't achieve what you want. The best thing through talk through mutual respect and also should approach more realistic way according to the new reality. So this man went to Israel and when he went to Israel, he basically was breaking bread with the colonialist. As somebody who is from Tibet, it would make sense that he would have more compassion for the people of Palestine. It's actually quite shocking that a settler colonialist nation is something that he looks up to and instead of criticizing them he criticizes Hamas and the Palestinians and he's saying that not all Palestinians are bad those Palestinians who actively fight back against people taking their land those are the bad apples and they should be rooted but the Palestinians who just stand by while their land is being taken where they're being actively colonized well they are the good Palestinians could you imagine if somebody said that to him about Tibet, that Tibet should be completely controlled by China? If somebody made an argument that China would be all right taking all the lands in Tibet and, you know, building their buildings in there, doing whatever they wanted with the land. 
Do you think he would support it? And do you think that the Tibetans who are fighting back, those who actually criticize the Chinese government like he does because he's on the Chinese government, do you think that we could say that they are the bad people? And the only good thing about Hamas is that it is elected. Is it democratically elected? But of course, as usual, we cannot tell yet. It's too early to tell. I find this very disturbing that a man of peace, a man who is actively fighting people taking his land and he wants autonomy and freedom, would go to another country and break bread with the colonialists who are criticizing the colonized. It's completely backwards, in my opinion. He said absolutely nothing about Israel nothing. He supported them 100%. The whole thing was about criticizing Hamas, criticizing Palestinians, and not all Muslims are bad, not all Palestinians are bad. Why don't you criticize the Israeli government and their actions? Used one of your quotes in their posters. It said, the goal should be that migrants return and help rebuild their countries. You have to be practical. It's impossible for everyone to come. The European country should take these refugees and give them education and training. And then aiming is return to their own land. And if these people want to stay in Europe, shouldn't they be allowed to? Limited number, okay. But the whole Europe eventually become Muslim country, impossible. Or African country, also impossible. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? I mean, you're a refugee yourself. I think the answer is to this crisis. Main effort should go their own country, bring peace. In Syria? Hmm? Syria, Libya, or even Afghanistan. Generally, you see, people uh, always feel, oh, one day we return. So, so this... So ultimately, all refugees, they should aspire to go back to their homeland. Yes. This man is a refugee himself, but he's telling other refugees that, you know, don't be refugees, concentrate on your own country. Now, what if you're a child who moves into America, for example? Somebody who moved into another country at, at an early age, and you have an attachment to that country, and you live in that country, how can you not contribute to the country you live in, to the country you grew up in, to the country that you love. The idea that refugees should concentrate on their own country is very right-wing, and it's not very realistic, because that's not how human life works. And somebody like him should have more compassion, especially since he himself is a refugee. And this is something that I would never tell anyone who's a refugee. I'm Somali myself. If I see people in America contributing to American country and they're ethnically Somalis and they're contributing to that country, why would I say that they should concentrate on Somalia? That's not how it works. That's their country. They live there. Their families are there. Their future is there. Their grandchildren, their roots will be there in future. And, and as a spiritual leader to tie people into a land like that is quite ridiculous in my opinion and this will be the only spiritual criticism that i will give him is because where you born in does not dictate who you are or what you have attachment in people have been moving through ages and the idea that you know settlers who go from one country to another or refugees who go from one place to another shouldn't be able to relocate and they should always concentrate on their home country per se. I find that to be absurd. Now, of course, diaspora is important when it comes to people dealing with the issues that back home. And diaspora, for example, Indian diaspora has been very crucial in India's development. Same thing with China. Diaspora is always important. I understand that. But the idea that every single Afghani who's left Afghanistan should always worry about Afghanistan and they should concentrate on Afghanistan instead of starting a new life. Because that's what being a refugee means. It means that you relocate to another country. And as long as you are totally 100% focused on your past, 
you will never start a new life. You will never integrate into your new society. Actually, the advice should be that listen, worry about your new life. Contribute to your current state. You can't really just worry about your past. For many refugees, the memories are haunting them. They want to move forward and they've been given an opportunity to start anew. All the other things that he said that you heard on this video, I could maybe understand in extent because the Western countries are promoting him, they are supporting him, and of course, he does not want to criticize them.